Welcome to another episode of the Tobago House of Assembly's Post-Executive Council Media Briefing. This week, the Secretary of Community Development, Enterprise Development and Labor, Marcelin Melville-Jack, addresses the media. Let me begin with the OSH Department, which is Occupational Safety and Health. They would have celebrated OSH Week 2018 from the 23rd to the 27th of April 2018. And this year, the World Day for Safety and Health at Work was celebrated on the 28th of April. The theme set by the ILO was Generation Safe and Healthy. And this year's focus was a joint campaign to improve the safety and health of young workers and to end child labor. The campaign aimed to accelerate action to achieve sustainable development goals of safe and secure working environments for all workers by 2030 and ending all forms of child labor by 2025. So in Tobago, the OSH department within the division conducted several activities to commemorate NOSH week. And this was done over a two month period. Some of the activities in which they engaged were that of educating the young and adults in OSH at the workplace. They created greater awareness throughout the Tobago House of Assembly and the Tobago community. They increased the knowledge of OSH among employees so that they were able to initiate corrective actions on identified hazards. Together, they were able to achieve an overall improvement in ensuring that divisions were more OSH compliant in conjunction with the OSH Act, Chapter 88.08. They were also able to positively build and maintain an effective safety culture throughout the divisions of the THEs. So these activities were varied. The first activity was that of a secondary school caravan. Seven schools were visited. And let me take the opportunity to thank a couple organizations, I should say private organizations, that joined with the division to ensure that this caravan was a tremendous success. The Trinidad and Tobago Police Service, the Fire Service, COSTAT, Cipriani, Cipriani Labor College, and the Labor Department within the division. I understand that the lectures at secondary schools were quite successful and commendable, and I would like to thank them for the role that they played in assisting the department. There was also something called a hazard hunt, and they would have done this for the first time this year. And that was conducted at the multipurpose facility at Lowlands. Nine divisions participated, and each team consisted of five persons. I think their um, responsibility was to walk around this facility and identify the number of hazards that they, they, you know, that they found. And in a little while, I will let you know the division that came in first. There was a prize giving ceremony last Friday and all divisions were there to collect their trophies. Another activity took the form of an interdivisional quiz competition. In this competition, seven divisions participated and this competition was also held at the head office at 10 Montessori Drive in Glen Road. There was also the most effective safety and health committee and four divisions within the THA participated. I will name those four divisions, the assembly legislature, the office of the chief secretary, the division of food production, forestry and fisheries, and the Division of Community Development, Enterprise Development and Labor. They also participated in a community outreach safety and health exercise which was held at Chauvin Plaza 
And here they gave tips on workplace and home safety. And I must tell you that this exercise was well attended by persons within the community. An award was also given for an OSH audit on divisions and the most improved division was selected this year to receive the trophy. The final award that they gave was that of the Tobago House of Assembly OSH Employee of the Year Award. Six divisions nominated an employee who they believe made the greatest contribution to the improvement of safety and health within their division. And on Friday last, one division came out victorious and the employee of that division was awarded a challenge trophy and a replica that that employee was allowed to hold on to. So now let me give you the results of those competitions. I'll just give you the first place. So in the hazard hunt competition, which was held at the Lowland Multipurpose Facility, coming in first was the Division of Food Production, Forestry and Fisheries. In the quiz competition, coming in first was the Division of Community Development, Enterprise Development and Labour. And the individual who answered the most correct questions was Ms. Nadira Green, who also received an individual trophy. The most improved division, as far as the OSH audit was concerned, was the Assembly Legislature. And receiving the OSH Individual of the Year Award was Mr. Garnet Woods of the Assembly Legislature. So I want to congratulate all the divisions that participated and helped us to make this competition effective and I can tell you that OSH committees are located in every division within the THA and their responsibility is to ensure not just that the employees are safe but that the facility itself complies with that of OSH standards. So congratulations to the outstanding work that has been done by the Department of OSH occupational safety and health. I now move to another department that can be considered controversial at times, but in whom I have the greatest confidence that the work that they do and the work that they continue to do will redound to the benefit of all of Tobago. And this is the CPEP department. I will also like to let you know that a CPEP policy has recently been approved by the Executive Council. My understanding is that there was no clear-cut policy in place before and we are very pleased that we are now able to produce a policy guideline so that workers within the department can now understand the context in which they are to work. So, CPEP was involved in World Environment Day, or should I say Mother Earth Day, International Mother Earth Day, which started on the 22nd of April. And they have agreed among themselves that they will engage communities for the entire month of April and May until the end of the environmental cycle, which is the 8th of June 2018, when they celebrate World Oceans Day. Now, the theme for International Mother Earth Day was ending plastic pollution. And we would realize that this is very topical because my understanding is that even now, some of the supermarkets in Trinidad have already started reducing the amount of plastic that is produced, especially in the plastic bags that um, they give to their customers. So here in Tobago, we are taking up the mantle and CPEP is starting 
by using a competition that will help us to end plastic pollution. This theme is also consistent with all the other themes of major environmental groups and CPEP will comm commemorate this on World Oceans Day. And the theme for World Oceans Day is prevent plastic pollution and encourage solutions for a healthy ocean. So let me go into a little bit of what we can expect. CPEP proposes to intensively engage the Tobago community in Earth Day activities from April 22nd to June 2018. And this will include community consultations, a plastic prototype competition, and a slogan competition. But it will not end there. I want to propose that CPEP will partner with the Division of Infrastructure Quarries and the Environment, in particular, the Environment Department, to engage in the removal of waste, in particular white waste, to ensure that our environment in Tobago lives up to all that we expect it to be when we talk about being clean, green, and serene. So communities would be encouraged to support the adoption of the global framework, and that is to regulate plastic pollution. So while we educate and we mobilize, we want to activate Tobagonians to control the use of, of um, plastic. And you know, even though they cannot immediately eradicate the use of plastic, they will be engaged in activities where they will reuse plastic in such a way that it does not end up into our landfills and create the kind of pollution that takes a very long time to eradicate. So in alignment with the CDEPS policy, which is the preservation of the environment and a better standard of living for its people, this initiative is aimed at promoting environmental and climate literacy, heightening civic engagement, entrepreneurial spirit, and personal responsibility at the community level. So the project will be geared at facilitating and promoting the process for Tobigonians to take personal responsibility for plastic pollution by choosing to either reject, reduce, reuse, or recycle plastic as effective strategies. So CPEP will engage the local po population on creative methods to end plastic pollution. And through these efforts, it is hoped that we would encourage the community as a whole to support the adoption of the global framework to regulate plastic pollution. We will help to spread awareness about the hazards of plastic pollution on the environment. We will help to impart knowledge about the reduction and the reuse of plastic. And we will help the population to understand the use of the alternatives of plastic. It is also hoped that through the Business Development Unit, we will be able to help persons within the community to create new economic opportunities through the recycling of plastic. And the long-term effect will be clean up initiatives so that the accumulation of plastic at the landfills will be lessened. So let me talk a little bit about the slogan competition. This competition is an internal competition among the CPEP staff themselves. They would be encouraged to compose creative pieces individually or in groups no more than three minutes in length. It can take the form of speech band, song, dance, spoken word, you name it, even a skit. And the winners of, these com of this competition will be promoted on our local, and I say local, meaning internal program that we call WhatsApp, 
We will also hope that they will also be promoted on Let's Talk Tobago. The staff competition is scheduled for Friday the 4th of May at the Divisions Conference Room. And the winning composition will receive a challenge trophy, which will be presented to them as a prize. The intellectual property and creative pieces of the competition will become part of our marketing campaign to end the plastic pollution. So I'm saying here that this does not end on the 8th of June. We are hopeful that all the pieces that are produced during this competition will be displayed at local venues, at the Lowlands Mall, and at different community spaces so that the community will always keep to the forefront of their minds that we need to play our part in ending plastic pollution. International Mother Earth Day will be celebrated or was celebrated on April 22nd and our department launched its social media campaign for Earth Day on that day, April 22nd. So on, April, on um, May 4th, we will be able to judge those completed designs that I spoke to you about. And the winning project will also receive not just a trophy, but a cash prize of $5,000. So I'm talking here about the plastic prototype competition, which will be open to community groups throughout Tobago. We are asking persons to come up with creative ways of using plastic. And we are hopeful that at the end of the day, the project that is the winning project will not just receive a cash prize of $5,000, but will be funded beyond that by the business development unit to create an entrepreneurial activity. So I'm saying if it is that you have found a creative way of using plastic, let's say in producing furniture, you may want to turn that into an entrepreneurial activity and the business development unit is ready and willing once you meet the criteria to engage you in the grant funding or even the loan funding program. So how can you participate in this prototype? All you need to do is to visit us at the department of CPEP within the division at number 10 Montessori Drive, Glen Road, complete the registration form. What we are expecting from you is a description of the project and the purpose, the list of materials that you use, because we are saying you may not always be able to use plastic only, but we are hoping that plastic will comprise the majority of the material that is used. We also hope to have a short video and pictures of the design process so that we are sure that this was done by the community group itself. We're not taking it for granted. So, you know, in this competition, we are developing all sorts of competencies. So you may find that at the end of the day, the community group that is involved in this project may even find themselves working in the media, because we are asking now, them now to do some kind of video production for us. So they will then be able to exhibit and set up their prototype, not just for the division display, but also for display that will be held at the Lowlands Mall on May 5th, 2018. Now all the prototypes will be on display for the public. However, the official judging will take place on May 7th, which is the Monday at the, the division's head office. And we are inviting representatives of private enterprises to assist in the judging. We will also have representatives from different divisions within the THA, as well as representatives of CPEP itself. So ladies and gentlemen, I am excited about 
what we propose to see coming out from the communities as far as this project is concerned. And I am certain that given our concerted efforts and the mandate to CPEP, to ensure that our communities remain not just clean, but green will help us towards ensuring that the community of Tobago and all of Trinidad and Tobago eventually becomes free of plastic pollution. And our main focus in these initiatives is partnerships and collaboration. So we are saying here that CPEP cannot do it alone they would create the kind of excitement within the communities that will make even persons within the communities want to engage in, product, in um, projects like these themselves. So again, I want to congratulate CPEP for the initiative, and I want to encourage all community groups throughout Tobago to engage in this process, participate in the competition so that we can reduce pollution and illegal dump sites, not just within our communities, but throughout the beautiful island of Tobago. You mentioned a policy, CPA policy. Mm -hmm. um, can you give us any insight into what, um, what the policy speaks of, what direction this policy wants to take CPA in? Okay. Now, we all remember that when CPEP came into existence, it was not meant to be a job, a permanent job. It was supposed to be temporary relief for those persons who may have been socially disadvantaged or those persons who were unemployed, primarily women. But over the years, the, the, it has taken on a, it has become a creature of its own in that we have persons who are employed for, I want to say, as long as the program has been in existence, which at this time is about 16 years. So it is proposed that this um, function will no longer run for that long term. We are hopeful that by training the persons who come into the program, we will empower them so that they will be able to leave the program at the end of or before three years. And they can then become entrepreneurs on their own, or they can find themselves with the kind of capacity that will allow them to find long-term employment elsewhere. It also speaks to participation of, P of um, the employees within CPEP in private enterprises as well as in other divisions throughout the Tobago House of Assembly, wherever the need exists for landscaping duties. And it is hopeful that um, we are, it is hoped that um, this will help us to save some of the money that we are expending on landscaping um, duties, even now throughout the Tobago House of Assembly. Because you know the challenge that we have in finding funding to keep this program running. So this in itself would help to generate the kind of income that will keep the program running for those persons who will always be disadvantaged. We can't get away from it. Throughout the um, life of communities, there will be people who will need this kind of help. And we want to continue to offer this kind of assistance, but we would want people to move out so that others can take benefit of it. So those are two important points. The division will now be enforcing a three-year tenure for participants in the program. And that will be effective from 2019. We are putting things in place towards that. Thank you very much. Um, secondly, in the, uh, the plastic initiative, you spoke mm -hmm. about white waste, targeting white waste. Yeah. Um, what exactly is white waste? So we are talking about things like your the refrigerators and the microwaves and the washing machines that you see on the side of the road. We believe that if CPEP 
partners with the Division of Infrastructure, Quarries and the Environment, as well as the Division of um, Health, for want of a better word. We together could ensure that this pileup on the streets within communities become a thing of the past. Because CPEP in their duties, they can take away some forms of bulk waste from communities. And then you find that the environment, they have a similar program. Health also, they would do a similar function primarily at Christmas time. So we are now of the opinion that all three divisions can come together and work this program in such a way that you would not see white waste on the side of the road for long periods because CPEP works within the community and the kind of information that is required and the kind of um, equipment that is needed to get rid of the waste. Once we come together, it can be done sooner. Thank you for staying with us for the Tobago House of Assembly's Post-Executive Council Media Briefing for the week ending April 28th, 2018.